Good evening, one and all, and welcome to episode seven of season two of the Oz Crow Soccer Show. My name is Taunchi Prusat, and um, I'm one half of the dynamic duo. My better half is coming, is welcoming to being welcomed to the show, Ante Grabovac. Good evening, Ante, and uh, how are things up in the harbour town? Good evening, Taunchi. Yes, everything's going well. What a spectacular introduction. Thank you for that. And, yeah, <laughs> we're all good. We're all good up here, just like you are down there. Yeah. Now, first of all, Ante, I, I, I do need to say something. I do need to say something. I need to make an announcement. In Croatian, najprije moram pozdraviti i to na hrvatskom jeziku, na hrvatskom jeziku, ekipu, a ne klub. Um, klub grada srca mog, a ujedno i rodni grad mojih roditelja, Onk Metković. A big shout out to all the uh, Onk Metković players, supporters, fans in Lijepa Naša i Metković. Uh, Ante, two years running, they were the top team in the prva županijska liga Dubrovačko Neretanske županije. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Uh, this year, they weren't, they weren't able to get into the Trecha Liga, but unfortunately this year they finished in fifth position. But uh, they, they, I've had this beautiful top sent over to me. Look at that. On that is it's awesome. Magnificent. The only problem is their size XLs over there are our size XSs over here. So I'm going to have to lose about 15 kilos in order to fit into one of those. But, uh, yeah, big pause to all the, the – that's, that's their motto. Oh, shut up again. Equipa a I love it. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Very, very a social type of uh, environment there. Ante, speaking of tops, what lovely top are you wearing there tonight? Oh, I've got a Sydney United top, a bit of a vintage one from uh, the late 90s um, NSL days. So, yeah, I've uh, decided to pull it out of the closet. That's stand part of the stand up. Let, let us all see it. Yeah, we're going to bring you up oh, there. Yeah. There we go. The lotto. There we go. Modeling. There we go. There we go. Oh, so, look at that. Um, there you go. Yeah, Wait, look yeah. at the back even. It's got the number six and Ante, if you can see that on the back. So, yeah, that oh, was yeah. Uh, vintage. Back from the late 90s. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. Folks, if you've got a soccer top, um, a vintage soccer top or a top from overseas, pop it down in there in the comments section. Take a little selfie and put yourself there. Uh, well, you don't have to show your face if you don't want to, but we'd love to see the wall, the, the varied tops on display. And, you know, there's a heap from overseas. And uh, speaking of overseas, mate, have we got a guest lined up for tonight from overseas? Um, Jacob Tarasenko, originally from Newcastle here in Australia. Great story, this one. His mum's Croatian. His dad's half Russian and half Ukrainian. Um, and um, he was born, the dad that is, he was born in, no, not in Kiev or in Moscow. He was actually born in Hong Kong. What a story that is. And after a stint in England, where he actually had a, a, a scholarship, a youth scholarship at Cambridge, not the university, but the soccer club, um, and a stint in Sweden. He's ended up in Croatia playing in the um, third tier for Enka Duga, Dugoselo. Mate, we're going to have him a later, on, later on in the show. And um, what about the big NPL Croatian derby happening this Friday? Ante, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely huge. Um, and hopefully we'll have a couple of special guests uh, make an appearance from that particular game. And so that will be hopefully Anthony Duzel from the Melbourne Knights and Michael Gergic from St. Albans. And as you mentioned, Taunchi, when we were speaking earlier, you know, if the Melbourne Knights get promoted to the second division, well, this could be the last sort of derby between the two clubs at NPL Victoria level. 
Yeah, absolutely. That would be so. Yep, that is exactly right. So, um, a lot to play for. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a lot more about that in the news desk, and we've got so much to get through, folks. And so much to get through. That speaking of the news desk, we're going to launch straight into it because we've got lots of guests tonight, lots to talk about. Plus, stay right to the very end, folks. We've got some footage of the futsal semi-finals in Croatia. You will have to see to believe futsal Dinamo versus uh, Novo Vrijeme. Makarska, the um the atmosphere inside the stadium was electric, and we've got some footage that we will show later on in the show. So, folks, show in the show, get it? <laughs> uh, stay with us. Don't go for too long, and I promise that's the last of the bad dad jokes tonight. It's time it. for news desk. <laughs> Absolutely. News desk, Taunchy. Where do we start? Other, none other than the Australia Cup this week Let's with the Austra- Oz Crow Club still in the Australia Cup. As you can see, we've still got eight, but unfortunately next Tuesday we will have a maximum of seven because we've got North Geelong Warriors at home to St. Albans Dinamo in the big Croatian derby. And I believe Taunchy will be commentating on that one. He'll be able to watch yes, that live. So that'll be I, really exciting. I'm very, very excited about this. Yes, it will be... Um, um, here in Geelong, down at Alco Park, um, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump away from my place, but it is going to be absolutely freezing. And um, looking forward to this. This is a, 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 a yeah, it should be great. Next Tuesday, seven thirty PM on NPL.TV. Um, you'll be able to watch it all on there, and um, dare I say, it'll probably be available on. Um, um, I'd say maybe on Facebook Live or what you're not, but uh, yeah, look, that's that's on next weekend. Um, tonight, mate, there's an there's over in the in the West, Gwalop, Croatia, taking on Maddington, Maddington, White City. That game kicks off at 9 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time in about an hour's time. Um, but uh, yeah, so that should be should be quite quite a quite a uh, interesting game. Hopefully, they can get through as well. So that yeah, we do have eight Croatian clubs left until next Tuesday. That's right. And of course, last week after we went off air, it was a three-all draw in Canberra after full time. But then uh, Canberra Croatia won an extra time, 5-3 over Gungahlin. And so they move on to the next stages as well. Okay, moving on over into Tassie and Glenorchy Knights. They had a good 2-0 victory. Well, 2-0 loss, unfortunately, on the oh on the gosh. weekend. The second, second loss of the season. And um, they're still in second position, and they are playing away this weekend at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Moving over into MPL Victoria, the Knights keep scoring goals. Five different goal scorers, 5-0 thrashing of Heidelberg United. Well done to the Knights. South Melbourne, unfortunately, led 2-0, and um, North Geelong got a goal back. But uh, in the end, South Melbourne ended up 2-1 winners. And St. Albans ended up winning the game, even though they got a red card in the 23rd minute. So uh, great job there, St. Albans. And they beat Green Gully by one goal to nil. The Knights are the highest placed Croatian team in MPL Victoria. And good on St. Albans moving up the ladder quite a bit. So uh, let's hope they continue to do that. In and by the, the way, second division, by the way, aren't it, the goal scorer of that goal um, for St. Albans was none other than our guest tonight, Michael Gurgic, Captain Courageous. So, He scored the only goal of the game. He'll tell us all about that game, that's for sure. A bit later on in the show, folks. Perfect. He can take us through that particular goal. Um, In the the second division, we had Dandenong lose 1-0 to Eastern Lions, and Dandenong are currently in fifth position. This weekend, uh, there's another Croatian derby on Friday night, and uh, I do believe, Taunch, you you could be commentating on this one too. And um, Voice, I tell you what, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be huge. So Melbourne Knights at home to St Albans Dynamo, and of course we'll be speaking about that match a little bit later on in the show. But get on down there on Friday night if you are there. North Geelong, thirteenth versus fourteenth this weekend, the relegation battle uh, against Bentley Greens. Let's hope that North Geelong can get the victory there at home at Elko Park on Saturday at three pm, and Dandenong are away this week to Brunswick City. In capital football, Gungahlin United and Canberra Croatia played a two-all draw uh, after their big Australia Cup match during the week as well. And O'Connor Knights thrashed Woden Western six goals to nil. 
And currently, Canberra, Croatia are in action against Woden. It's half time there, or just after half time, and Canberra, Croatia are leading that match 1 0. And on Sunday, um, they take on Canberra Olympic, who they will also play in the Australia Cup next round. So, um, yeah, in Canberra, there's only eight teams. They play each other a lot. Also yeah. at home this week is O'Connor Knights. And as you can see, O'Connor currently sitting in third position and Canberra sitting in sixth position. Down in football South Coast, we have got South Coast United. They are in the relegation game this weekend as well, playing against the 12th place Balambia Rosellas. Balambi haven't won this year, so let's hope um, South Coast can do the business and climb up the ladder there and move away from the bottom place team. Hersel Zagreb, I was at this match on the weekend playing against the top placed Uni of New South Wales. Hersel were down 1 0 at half time, and the second half came out and played a fantastic match. And um, they are now in eighth position as a result of that. And they play the Newcastle Jets in their third match of this Sunday sort of fixtures. So this is the third one at Penzers Park. Get on down there, support the boys. Four matches in a row undefeated, and let's hope that they can keep that up. And uh, Tony Chavard will be pleased that I've got the latest logo up uh, because of uh, well <laughs> <laughs> uh, On Sydney United. Oh, my goodness. Sydney United. Jeez. Uh, struggling to score goals. Unfortunately, a penalty handball just on the edge of the box, given away just before halftime, and Roy O'Donovan for Olympic converted the penalty and so that leaves Sydney United in fourth position but playing against third this week in Marconi so they're away to Marconi on Saturday night let's hope that they can do the business there they are struggling to score goals at the moment so um yeah let's see what happens Saturday Up night blockbuster there at Marconi so, Stadium yeah what they used to call the palace and maybe they still call it the palace uh Newcastle Croatia 4-0 this team just can't stop scoring goals well done. Top of the table. And they take on their away to South Mainland this Saturday afternoon. Up in the Gold Coast. So Gold Coast ended up winning by three goals to nil over Brisbane Olympic. There's another Olympic team. This is great. We're getting to learn learn all about the Greek teams called Olympic <laughs> around Australia. They're all and everywhere, so aren't they? They're everywhere, just like the Croatian clubs, right? And yeah. so uh, Gold Coast Knights are sitting pretty in second position. Just two points shy of Gold Coast United. And this Saturday at home, they take on Rockdale Rovers. So let's hope that they can get the victory there. Rockdale sitting in eighth position. Or is it Rochdale? I don't know. One or the other. Rochdale. Rochdale, F I think, yeah. Oh, don't F you love to see Q this? Yeah. FQPL4 Metro. Brisbane Knights are at the top. Well <laughs> sitting done, pretty Brisbane Knights. Ten matches, ten wins. Unbelievable. 30 points. There you go. And this weekend, they are at home to Tarangindi Tigers at the Brisbane Knights Sports Complex. So um, go out and support them if you are in Brisbane. South Australia, yeah. Adelaide Raiders, top of the table, 1-4-2 over Fulham United. So the Raiders keep on keeping on. And this Saturday, they are away at 3 p.m. to Cumberland United. And moving on to Football West and the Western Knights. They, unfortunately, were undefeated but lost 5-1 to Fremantle City. Oh, must hurt. Yeah, heavy loss there. And then uh, Gwellop, unfortunately, were also losers at home, losing 4-2 to Subiaco. Western Knights are still on top, but they've only got a one-point lead at this particular point in time. And Gwellop are sitting in fourth position. Both teams are away this weekend. And that's a wrap for all the teams around Australia. Yeah. Now, um, Auntie, you're telling me that today's a very, very important day um, or would have been a very important day for someone who was a big, big um, friend of Sydney United and would have been his 80th birthday. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolute legend. Uh, Johnny Warren, of yeah. those of you who will remember Johnny Warren, used to be on SBS and before that, you know, was the captain of the Australian um, Socceroos. And, you know, did so much for football in this country. And, yeah, it would have been his 80th birthday today. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2004, so 19 years ago. Can you believe that? And, yeah. Um, close, doesn't if, it? Yeah, if you can bring up that particular uh, photo for um, our friend, Mr. Uh, yeah, there we go. We've got Tony Chavard. <laughs> In is the, that a young Tony uh, Chavard there, is it? <laughs> that's a young Tony Chavard in Milenko's bar at Sydney United. Yes, that's right. Um, giving Johnny, Johnny used to like his Johnny Walker. So uh, 
Tony Chabot used to give that to him and say, there you go. <laughs> That's how they yeah. got their friendship. Now, on the left there, there's a letter that Johnny Warren wrote to Sydney United. Mate, do you want to tell us a little bit more about this? Because this involves a certain uh, Ante Grabovac. Do tell. Yeah, yeah, I was floored when I uh, opened up this letter and, um, you know, just unannounced, the man just sent this letter. Johnny and I used to have these conversations pretty much on a fortnightly basis. Whenever Sydney United would have a home game, he used to have a column in the Sunday papers and he used he needed material and our conversations used to end up going for 40 minutes and 45 minutes and an hour. Then we'd call each other back. He was such a lovely guy and, yeah, sorely missed um, by everyone in Australian football. Yeah. Yeah, Such absolutely. a great friend to uh, Sydney Croatia, Melbourne Croatia, and a you know, big advocate of the uh, ethnic clubs in Australia and, and the importance of the ethnic clubs have um, had on Australia. And it's a shame he hasn't seen, you know, Australia qualify for these um, five World Cups in a row and things like that because he would have absolutely loved that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 100% without, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, Ante, thanks very much for the roundup, a great roundup. Well, folks, we're going to take a very, very short break. Um, a big shout out to Slavicek Studio Architecture, um, former Sydney boy who uh, was living in Melbourne for a while, now lives in Perth, um, has been a great supporter of this show. Um, he's an architect extraordinaire for any of your architectural needs. Do see Robert Slavicek. But uh, yeah, look, we urge anyone who is has got a small business or your club or just wants to help out. We need your support. Um, get in contact with us in any way, shape or form. Now, you can do that via two ways. You can either contact us via email, ozcrowsoccershow at gmail.com or call us on our mobile 0402-012716 if your club would like to sponsor an episode or if you've got a business um, that would like to get involved with the um, show. We would be... Um, we would be um, Certainly willing to uh, um, help you get your business um, a little bit more kind of, uh, what's the word, brand awareness as well. And at the same time, you'll be helping a very, very important sports forum. But in the meantime, folks, we're going to take a break. When we return, it's our first guest and we'll be going all the way to Zagreb, Croatia for our first guest, Jacob Tarasenko. Don't go away, folks. It is the Oz Crow Soccer Show. And a word, this was pre-recorded. You'll notice us wearing slightly different clothes as well. Because Not me. Of the time That's difference. why I wore the same stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great interview. You do not want to miss it. See you soon. Welcome to Slavicek Studio Architecture. Our approach combines modern design with harmonious solutions tailored to your unique needs. We listen closely to your vision and turn it into a functional, beautiful living environment that truly feels like home. Our designs cater to your needs and evolve with you over time, encouraging deeper connections with family and friends. Specializing in custom residential homes and boutique apartments, we balance luxury and comfort to create a welcoming atmosphere for everyone to enjoy. Discover a world of inviting and captivating design at www.slavicekstudio.com.au Contact us for a journey from idea to reality. Slavicek Studio Architecture, turning your dreams into reality. Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show, and it's time for our very, very first guest. And uh, we're going to go live to Croatia, um, aren't it? And we're going to be talking to a, a gentleman by the name of Jacob Tarasenko. Um, or Tarasenko, we'll find out the pronunciation very, very carefully, uh, shortly. But he um, he's, uh, plays in the – now get this – 
the Croatian second division, which is actually the third tier competition. Let's get that right. I <laughs> say so you got the Super Sport Elite Liga, then the Prva Liga, and then the Druga Liga. So he plays in the Druga Liga with uh, Dugo Selo. And last half season or last season, he was tearing up the fields playing for HMK Segesta Sisak in the fourth tier competition, which is the third division. Oh, to explain it all to us is um, Jacob Tarasenko, all the way from Croatia, joining us live here on the Oscro Soccer Show. Jacob, thank you for joining us here on the show, and uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. How are you? Thank, thank you, guys, first of all, for having me on the show as well. Uh, I appreciate it, and uh, I'm great here in, in Zagreb. It's a little bit uh, overcast at the moment. The rain's coming down, so... Uh, it's nice weather for training, actually. <laughs> Is it? Uh, keeps you nice and cool. Now, uh, first of all, yeah, like how? How? First of all, um, explain to us you, you're, you're, where you're playing at the moment. It's a uh, Dugo Selo. Uh, for those that are not familiar with Dugo Selo, it's on the outskirts of Zagreb. And um, tell us a little bit more about you know the competition that you're playing in at the moment, the Druga High NL, which is the third tier competition in Croatia. Yes, yeah, so uh, Dugo Selo. Uh, the actual translation in English is Long Village. Hmm. Um, so it's quite funny. When I came there, everyone was making like, oh, it doesn't matter. Everyone makes that joke anyway about Long Village. And it's a small little, I would even say a little town, um, but uh, but it's very nice. It's on the outskirts, as you said, of, of Zagreb, about 20 minutes away from, from the center or 30 minutes away from Zagreb. Um, and they just recently got promoted um, this last season into the second national league where they combined uh, all the best teams from the third leagues mm-hmm. uh, last season and they combined it in, in to make a new professional league it was supposed to be but it's not mm-hmm. quite there just yet the infrastructure needs to be you know adjusted a little bit uh however yes it's uh, it's the second national league in croatia but it's the third league yeah. Well, there's the ladder. There's the competition standings after the weekend. Zrinski Yurievats are on top at the moment, just by one point. Sesvete, um, a reasonably big club from, from one of the satellite suburbs of Zagreb, they're in second spot. Yadran Ploče, my team, or well, close to Metkovic anyway, they're in third position and they were leading along um, for a lot of the um, time. But unfortunately, they don't have the infrastructure. We talk about the infrastructure problems there, Jacob, and we'll touch on that a little bit longer. They don't have a license to qualify for the second division or the second tier. Um, and should they have ended up on top, they would not have actually progressed through. But the interesting thing, I believe, Zrinski, Yuryevac and Sesvete are meeting each other in the final round. So there's <coughs> three games to go. But Dugo Sela, as you said, um, playing, well, they're fifth in the, in the competition standings. What's the competition like there? Is there something that you could compare it to maybe here in Australia? Well, I can't really <laughs> compare it to, to Australia because it's been so long since I've been to Australia. I think 11 years maybe since wow. I, I was. So when I left originally Australia, I haven't, I haven't been back. Um, so I can't, I can't really say anything like to compare it to anything. Yeah. Because I, I, I remember when I was growing up there, uh, I remember the – because I'm from Newcastle, the Premier uh-huh. League there in Newcastle. However, I think the standard of, of players here are, are a bit smarter um, and more trained, you know, schooled, should I say, because yeah. of most of the players have come from academy levels um, like Dinamo or Hajduk or even um, Lokomotiva. Yeah. You know, so they're pretty pretty well uh, schooled in this in, in this way. And I don't think that Australia has that much heritage uh, to offer, like here in Croatia. But then again, I could be completely wrong as well. Tell us a little bit about your football journey. I mean, how did you leave, obviously, as a youngster, um, um, Australia and um, moved over to Europe, right? Yeah. So basically what happened was uh, when I was uh, 12, I had a... Uh, an opportunity. I, I think it's. I, I, it was back then. It was called the National Champions, but it was every region of Australia was playing in um, to 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 like showcase yourself and and be selected for the Australian national team. And so I was, 
you know, uh, lucky enough to be selected in the Australian national team at the time. And uh, it, I think it was under 13s, under 14s. And we went for uh, a tournament in Malaysia. Uh, we ended up, it wasn't anything like special or anything, the tournament, but it was, they had like a competition of maybe, I think there was 12 teams and three different groups. And then at the end of the group or whoever put, was the best uh, club would play in the final with the All-Stars basically. Uh, so fr from there, I, I went on and trialed in England, but at the time, because we Croatia wasn't in the EU, it was difficult to actually stay in England because you needed to you know, change all your paperwork and everything. And it was difficult for us to actually fully move there. So we decided to, to move to Croatia. And uh, my ex-coach from Australia, uh, when I was in the national team, he actually had a lot of connections in Croatia because he's also Croatian. Who's Ante, that? Juric. Ante Milicic, was it? No, Juric. Juric, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he had a connection in Dinamo, so he sent sent me there. And after three days, I I, I registered I registered with them, and and that was it. That's incredible. That's incredible. Tell us, um, you've not only played in Croatia, you've, traveled, you've played outside of Croatia as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so after Croatia, um, I went to England and I played there in Cambridge United. Um, and I had a scholarship there. And uh, then I got at injured. the university. No, no, no. It, it's a football scholarship. Football they, scholarship. Okay. Yeah. So I think under. 16s to 18s they have like a football scholarship as it's like an academy player where they yeah, pay yeah. you uh where you're professional and you go also to school to like finish sports science uh oh, sports wow sports, Terrific. you know so yeah, is that? yeah so i was there for a little bit and then i got injured uh with my knee i had to have surgery and then after i come back i went to sweden and I stayed there for a few years and then the COVID uh, happened and in Sweden, the football didn't want to really start up again. So I had a friend, one of my best friends actually in, in Zagreb that suggested that I come back to, to Zagreb and, and I didn't. And that was it basically. And now I'm, I'm here and I'm playing. What's, what's life like for a young footballer in Croatia? Um, obviously not playing at the high what's it like playing you know in the third competition um, and, and what's the lifestyle just generally speaking there do you, do you, you know are you there with um, shacking up with any teammates are you with family um, are you living on your own how do you find it and, and also the training regime as well how often do you train and how often are you at the club so right now uh, when I moved away from England I've been basically living by myself so when I was in Sweden, I was all by myself. And now I'm with my girlfriend. Uh, she's actually Spanish. Um, mm -hmm. And I met her in England. So I'm, I'm not really, I'm not alone. And, um, and it's nice. I have also old friends from Dynamo uh, that I used to play with, that I train with as well, with my private coach. Um, and I would say the lifestyle here is more chilled and relaxed. Everyone... Mm -hmm can go for a, a cup of coffee or, or a tea or something or a cake in the middle of the day. It doesn't really matter. And you're just like taking your time with everything. And, <laughs> uh, and I think that's also quite nice. And then if, even if you go outside of Zagreb, Zagreb is kind of like the hectic area, they say. But if you go to the seaside, then everyone is even more chill. And <laughs> there's not really much fun, right? Okay? So, I mean, aren't and me being Dalmatins, you were very big smile on our face when you say that they're going down seaside shield and you, you, i don't know about you guys here in July at the moment it's getting cold it's getting, <laughs> we had a lovely weekend on the weekend but it's getting cold so the thought of a seaside shield oh, really, very it really resonates with very me Absolutely, yes. and what about uh, the language going with, how's your girlfriend um being of spanish um, um background how's she coping with the language are you trying to sort of um, learn the language as you come along or do you find that with English particularly in Zagreb you can get by with it? I mean to be honest everywhere in Croatia uh, people are speaking English more uh, fluently now like before when I first came 
it was a lot more difficult um, than now. I think it's really been, I don't know, like something has really changed in the new generation. I think it's just everyone feels like because of their system here, uh, they want to like explore more and go out of the creation and, and find different ways. And so English is a big, big step for them to, to get out of, of, of creation and explore. Um, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. most of the time it's, it's easy. My, my creation is, is good enough that I can get by. Um, obviously I need to learn more words, but I'm, I'm satisfied, uh, with how it is. My girlfriend, however, she didn't want to learn creation, uh, at first because she didn't think that we would stay in Croatia for so long, but now that yeah. she's fallen in love with Croatia and, and Zagreb, she has started to learn like small words and she started to communicate with with people like when she goes to the markets she's buying some yep. fruits and some flowers and you know she's trying to bargain with them a little bit so ah great oh it's yeah. nice so it's nice did you know much croatian when you uh first went over to dinner more or you, yeah. you came back no, came maybe, over only knowing maybe English. just walk and maybe you know hi and how are you and and good but that was basically the extent of my knowledge and actually i learned most of it when i was in sweden to be honest, because over there I was studying Swedish and mm -hmm. um, then I met a lot of Balkan, you know, football players and, and people, I would say, because there's a lot of immigrants that, uh, that, that moved uh, over there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, they all just started talking, talking Croatian to me or, or Balkan. And, you know, and I, I really learned more and more when I was there than really when I was in Croatia, because when I was here, everyone was trying to practice their English. So, uh, yeah, yeah. so that English was going to be my next question at dinner or how did you get by with, um, you know, the, 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 I guess the small parts, you know, the tactics, the, um, the stuff, because would they have, you know, kind of translated it for you? Would they have spoken English a little bit more? Um, and how did you go by with that? So you kind of almost answered the question there, but yeah, how did you find it initially at dinner or when you first got there? Um, yeah, were, were, were most people speaking in English or Croatian to you? So when I got like coach. there, the coach that I had, um, he actually spoke a decent amount of English. It wasn't like the best, but it was enough so that you can understand. And a lot of the players, they did speak English. So if I would need anything, like they would help me out if the coach couldn't explain it. And they yeah. also had, you know, physios and assistant coaches that actually spoke really good English. Um, so that would also, you know, balance it out a little bit. Uh, however, mm. like when I started to get used to everything, like I could start to understand a lot of what they were saying, but just not being able to, to speak back essentially, because it was a lot harder. Um, so I would pick up the gist of everything pretty quickly. And with football, it's not so much that you need to explain things. It's more about like you seeing like what position that you need to be in and yeah and you know then like if someone demonstrates something to me i'll pick it up straight away but for some other players they would need to you know to be taught in a different way so for me it wasn't that hard but uh when we moved into the, the next age the the coach didn't speak any english he only spoke croatian and german and it was a, it was more difficult then and Jacob, what was the difference in terms of coming from Australia and the training that you did here in Australia? Obviously, you got to a high level, you know, seeing that, you know, people like Ante Juric were taking notice of you. But then coming to Croatia the Dinamo, famous Dinamo school, um, you know, what were, the, what were the differences? So I would say the biggest difference is like they live on football here, like in Dinamo. You know, everyone loves football and everyone knows that, they're there for a reason. It's a, it's an opportunity of a lifetime, let's say, because Dinamo is one of the best academies in the world and produces some of the, the most talented players in the world. Like, yeah, there's so many, uh, from, from the academy, there's so many, I think there was a study done in 2018, I think where they were the second or third highest, um, uh, team or club or academy to produce young players i think they produced like 76 or something uh mm. it, 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 from that time zone i think ix was the top but that that's the whole whole plan of it is like how can they produce and how can they make more i remember 
uh, training, you know, one day after a game, it was on Monday, and they would send a select few players to an individual coach on the, that train while everyone else was training, you know. They would send those select few that would, he would think that would have potential to to do something with their career and to progress yeah. in some way. And they would send them to a, a private coach on the side of that training to do like some extra stuff, you know, like how to pass the ball properly, how to head yeah. the ball, or, you know, shooting practice or something like that. And then later on, we would come back with, with our, our team again, you know. So it's more- So that was in addition to the normal training. Exactly. So wow. So- exactly. So, and would you have trained every day then? Yeah. Sorry to cut you. Yeah. 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 So we were training every day. Uh, we will probably have like in, even now in Dugasella, we only have one one day, maybe two days rest. So it's it's full on. Um, and I also train with my private coach as well. So there's a the football here in general is everyone is more into it. In my opinion, of course, mm-hmm. you have players. I think there's a lot of talented players in Australia. And yeah. they do a lot of work, but I think that maybe the coaching isn't just there just just yet, you know, because yeah, they, they yeah. have more technical aspects here and tactical aspects that you need to yeah. learn. Um, well, sorry, mate, you can say? No, and I think that's what really changes and makes yeah. a difference between like the academies in Australia and and here in Croatia. But that's also my opinion from just now. Maybe it's it's been 10 years, you know, so... There's probably a lot that has changed, and I just don't yeah. know about it because I haven't been. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's, that's that's a fair point. Um, we're speaking with Jack, Jacob Tarasenko. He plays for NK Dugoselo in the Croatian third tier competition, the Druga Liga. Uh, we'll get, we'll take a very very short break, and when we return, we'll continue talking to Jacob, and we'll ask Jacob for some advice for any talented young player from Australia of a Croatian descent wanting to make it in Europe via Croatia. Folks, don't go away. It's the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Welcome to Slavicek Studio Architecture. Our approach combines modern design with harmonious solutions tailored to your unique needs. We listen closely to your vision and turn it into a functional, beautiful living environment that truly feels like home. Our designs cater to your needs and evolve with you over time, encouraging deeper connections with family and friends. Specializing in custom residential homes and booty apartments, we balance luxury and comfort to create a welcoming atmosphere for everyone to enjoy. Discover a world of inviting and captivating design at www.slavycheckstudio.com.au. Contact us for a journey from idea to reality. Slavicek Studio Architecture, turning your dreams into reality. Welcome back to the Oscro Soccer Show, and um, this is Anton Tornchi speaking to the wonderful Jacob Tarasenko, all the way from Zagreb. Uh, Jacob, tell us, you actually play as a traditional number 10. Is that your favorite position? I've seen some videos, you've scored some spectacular goals. Uh, if anyone gets a chance, go uh, watch some of uh, Jacob's highlights. But um, is that the position you played, you know, all the way through your career? No. So re- uh, from the beginning, I was actually uh, a striker. So a number nine all the way up. Basically, yeah, I, I was always a striker until Dynamo. And uh, then they started to test me out in different positions, like as a winger, as a number 10, uh, even as a right and left back, to be honest. And
Welcome back to welcome back to the um, Oz Crow Soccer Show. We seem to be having just some little technical glitches there. I'm not too sure what's happened there. We're going to try and get um, get uh, that back on track very very shortly for whatever reason. Um, but Aunt is Aunt is joining us as well. Aunt, uh, we're going to try and get that back on for wh for whatever reason. I'm not too sure. We, we may have lost the link or whatever. But um, yeah, talk about the, the the interview thus far. It's been it's been a really really good one with um, young, young Jacob Tarasenko. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fascinating to hear his journey and um, how he's ended up at Dugosello. And of course, um, you know, uh, <laughs> it was great chatting to him. Obviously, you're seeing what the conversation we had, but it was interesting, like even yeah. a half an hour later with all the um, answers he gave us as well with um, what's been happening in his career. Okay, we're going to try and get back to that one. And hopefully this time um, everything is smoothed out. Uh uh, I was a number 10, I was a number 6, I was a number 8. Um, and then after that, I, I came back and I was still a striker. I was still a number 10. I was a winger. So I was just more around like the, the I guess, attacking area uh, rather than coming back for defensive midfield or, or right back or left back. Uh, and now my preferred position is a striker still. Um, however... Number ten, I, I can, you know, I can, I can still make a big difference there. But as a striker, there's always more goals that I can score because I'm closer to the goal. So yeah. But as, but right now I'm playing um, as a number ten in Dugosello. And where is? If we have a. Sorry, go, go Sorry, you. mate. You go. go, <laughs> go just, you're right. I was just going to say, <laughs> where, where, where in, of all the uh, clubs you played for so far in your career, um, where have you found, you know, the most enjoyable? Where have you, you know. Has there been uh, any championship victories? Have there been any relegation battles? You know, what what, what type of clubs have you played for? So I've I've played uh, I've played in a, a variety of different clubs, and I've been in relegation battles. I've been in promotion uh, challenge, uh, I guess promotion challenges, yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, there's just so many, and I think that in general, I think Croatia has been really a place where I find myself coming back to where I feel kind of home here, you know, with the players and the type of style and the way that I like to play that, and they can understand it better. Whereas when I was in England or when I was in Sweden, it's more physical, more long balls, you know, and fighting and running. So, which is, I can play also and I adapted to that kind of football, but I think I'm better with the ball than, you know, running all the time. I mean, it's part of the game, so I have to do that. So yeah. I, I think that, um, I think here in Croatia, it's it's much better uh, in my eyes, in my opinion. Also, yeah. when I was in Australia, we the way that we played is was in that academy that I was in. Uh, it was it was called back then uh, Northern New South Wales Institute of Sport. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, I had an offer to go to the Australian Institute of Sport as well before I left to come to, to, to Dynamo, but I chose Dynamo because I thought that I would get uh, a better knowledge and understanding and education here in Croatia. Now, I was going to say, if we have a, have a look at, uh, bring that ladder back up of the uh, Druga Hrvatska Nogometna Liga. So Dugo Selo there um, are in fifth position at the moment, as we talked about Zrinski uh, and Segesta are fighting for promotion at the moment. Um, next step, What's your plans for for the next season? Have you have you sort of decided where you want to head or where you'd like to, or are you pretty happy to stay put at Dugosello at the moment and uh, and and maybe fight for promotion into the the second tier competition next season? Um, what do you, what are your plans at the moment? So it's a it's a little bit uh, strange my situation at the moment because uh, I came here for half a season. Um, and I have a contract that's going to last for uh, another half season. However, um, the president or the owner that I, I made the agreement with, he said that if there is any offers, uh, that, of course, he's not going to, to stop me. Um, so, m in my opinion, the best situation is to go higher. Um, mm. I, I want to play as high as I can and, and continue to, to score goals, and, and that's kind of where I'm at at the moment, I've, I've scored eight goals now in 12 games in, in this half season. And that's quite difficult to come into a new team 
especially when I came in the last two weeks of preseason. Um, so you need to adapt and you need to, you know, I, I was actually quite, quite lucky that I had some players that I used to play with in Dynamo playing in this, uh, in Dubois that, that I'm in now. So we connected pretty easily, but still, <laughs> as a new player, it's sometimes quite difficult to even adapt to the system of play, how players play with the movement. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty grateful that I've adapted quite well and the, the, the team has helped me as well a lot. So, Is it hard to get noticed over there or, or, or uh, you know, every one of your games, do you find that there are, you know, agents and scouts from some of the other teams? And look, being in, in Zagreb, there's there's quite a fair few teams playing in the Prva Druga Trecha Liga. We even had um, Rudesh president Joe Shimunich on the show two weeks ago and then newly promoted to the uh, Prva Liga. But um, yeah, is is it does word get around very quickly? You know, this this fella Tarasenko, he's scoring goals. Oh yeah, let's keep an eye on him. Um, how does it work over there? So I mean, it's I think that it is a little bit easier, perhaps. Uh, I've had a lot of articles written about me, especially after uh, being in uh, Sega stuff. Um, after scoring nineteen goals, and some of the goals that I did score, like the one from halfway, really uh, brought me into like the eye of people and really brought my name up um, even more just just from that and that's the reason why I could move uh, into a higher league afterwards because it's it's not so frequent that you see someone score 19 goals in a half season uh, doesn't matter what league it is so it, it will always help make yourself public to, to people's eyes and uh, yeah. And I think also it's easy when you score goals. Like it's an easier position to be as a striker and score a lot of goals to be seen. However, it's different when you're a defender or maybe a defensive player. Yeah. To, to be able to be seen in that in that way in the lower leagues, you know, because even though a lot of there's a lot of there might be a lot of scouts or a lot of people that come to watch the games and they might say that you're good. It's still usually depending on if you score the goal or make the assist. You know, it's more highlighted let's say then you know defensive duties excellent uh, i was also going to ask so you mentioned that you're playing with a couple of your former dynamo teammates w what else you know what other players constitute the league is it mainly a youthful league is it made of locals are there foreigners there um you know what about the coaching as well is it all local coaches tell us a little bit more about the league itself so yeah, so I would say it's it's a little bit of a mix, really. In this league, I think even, I think just the high NL, apart from the high NL, I think in every league you have to have three players under 21 mm -hmm. to play in your starting 11 uh, and throughout the whole match as well. Uh, and that also helps the the young players, you know, progress in their development of, of football. So it's like they're trying to really still progress the players here in, 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 in Zagreb and Croatia all the time. Um, there is a lot of mix. There is a lot of foreigners. Not as much as you would think, but there is still a lot. There's usually one or two foreigners in every team, basically. Mm -hmm. um, the coaches, I would say, more local. I, I, I don't think there is any like international co uh, coaches in the lower leagues. It's more yep. uh, local coaches. Um, and yeah, uh, and with the Dynamo players, I think there's a lot of ex academy players from higher higher divisions or uh, uh, players that have played abroad and and brought their knowledge back into the, those teams. Like in the third or second league, they may be in Austria and they come back, or even sometimes even the first the first leagues and they they come and play back. You know, yeah. some of the older, players, so to say. So. Interesting, interesting. Mate, um, we're going to have to wind it up very, very quickly, unfortunately. We'd love to get you back on the show maybe um, yes, a few months down the track. But before we go, um, if there, you know, there's there's a lot, a lot of talented young players of Australian-Croatian extraction, um, and, and this is something that we spoke with uh, Josip Šimunić just two weeks ago and saying the, the, the bridge between the Domovina and the Diaspora is starting to get a lot, lot smaller. There seem to be a lot more opportunities and Look for a lot of young Australian Croatians who are already in Croatia, um, and like yourself, looking to, to to make a name for themselves in the lower leagues, working their way up. 
What would be your advice to talented you know, young teenagers that are, you know, one eye on Europe and one eye in Croatia and, and, and you know, looking to, to, to make it abroad? What would be your, your words of advice for these uh, kids? Mm. It's, it's very difficult because my situation is very different to a, a lot of other people's situations. I think that the best thing is like you have to make sure that you're playing all the time. Like go to a level that's high enough that you're able to develop as a player, but also uh, where you're going to play consistently because that's when you're going to learn the most. Yeah. Um, and that's when you're going to develop the most. I mean, you can't go to, let's say, the first league and not play any minutes at all, but train with them. Of course, just training with them is going to be great uh, for your understanding and play and everything. You can learn from that. But if you're not playing, it's going to set you back because playing is the biggest way you're going to learn. Um, and I feel like I would say take that over playing in the highest division. But if you can do both, then it's perfect. Then yeah. that's that's really the, the aim, I, I would say. Fantastic, mate. Uh, some wise words there. And, and you often hear that, you know, you just need to be playing. You constantly need to be playing, not being on the bench, not being um, on the sidelines. But uh, coming from, from a player, um, it's wise, very, very wise words. Jacob, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and uh, enjoy the rest of the season. There's not many games to go, not many weeks to go. But, uh, yeah, look, wishing you all the very, very best for the rest of this season and certainly your future endeavours. Thank you, guys. Yeah, best of, best of luck and check out his YouTube channel for some of those fans, fantastic, spectacular goals. Let me tell you, that halfway one is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, ab you. yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll, we'll put that up on the on the screen now. So to watch footage of Jacob um, on YouTube, there's a YouTube channel there, www.youtube.com forward slash at Jacob Tarasenko. Is it Tarasenko or Tarasenko? It's Tarasenko. My uh, mum is Croatian and her name is Kovacevic. Oh, there you go. There you yeah. go. You can oh, also I... watch some of my clips on TikTok and uh, Instagram as well. I post there... more frequently. Uh, there you there. go. And this is just my highlights that I post up on YouTube. Beautiful. Brilliant. Brilliant. All right, mate. Get, thank you very much. You're going to get a friend request very soon, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Good on you. All right, that. Jacob Tarasenko there joining us live from Croatia. We're going to take a very, very short break. And uh, when we return, it's time to uh, continue the Oz Crow Soccer Show, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Tonsi, we couldn't hear a word you said. Hello. No, put your microphone down. I had the mute button. I had the mute button on. There we go. Um, <laughs> there just go. technical glitches going on left, right, and center. We do apologize. We don't know what happened there. Um, obviously, internet connections or something like that. But uh, let's move on, Ante. Um, it's time to talk the big Croatian derby. And as you mentioned, and 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 it actually slipped my mind, but you're absolutely right. Should the Melbourne Knights? Well, should. I'll put that down there so you can hear me better. Should the Melbourne Knights qualify for the inaugural National Second Division next year, Friday night may well be the last league derby between St Albans Dynamo and the Melbourne Knights. So, folks, all roads lead to Summer Street this Friday night. Make sure to get yourselves down there. And um, to help us preview um, uh, this big blockbuster on a Friday night, We've got the captain of St. Albans, Dinamo, Michael Grigic, coming on the show. Michael, good evening, and how are you? Welcome hey boys, to the Ice Crow good, thanks. How Soccer are Show. Very, very good, mate, and how are you? Yeah, not too bad, yeah. Just finished training tonight, so, yeah. All pumped up, ready to go, are we? Yeah, definitely are. The boys are ready. 
Yeah. Now, before before we bring our guest on from the uh, Melbourne Knights, first of all, mate, congratulations on the win last week against Green Gully. And, um, and you were the scorer of the goal, but I guess more importantly, you were able to hold on despite being 10 men down. Um, I watched that game and um, it was very, very tense right to the end. How was it for you guys on the field? Uh, we're a bit used to it now. I think we've got about five or six red cards this year. So 10 men, we're a bit <laughs> used to it. But no, it was, a, it was a tough game, tough game for us. Um, we battled away. We held on to the held on to the win. And um, yeah, I think we deserved it in the end. The boys fought hard and everyone, yeah, everyone done their job. Yeah. Has anything yeah, well, changed we'll the bring... last couple of weeks? You've you've had a couple of good results. Yeah, beers are stocked in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it Love is? it. <laughs> All right, then. Well, we're going to bring on now um, someone who's – well, they had a lot easier game than you guys, I suppose. A 5-0 win over Heidelberg United. But, uh, yeah, all the, the form book goes out the window when it's the derbies, that's for sure. A big welcome to Anthony Jozel from the Melbourne Knights. He's also just finished training. Anthony, welcome to the Oscro Soccer Show. Good evening, boys. How's it going? Very, very good, mate. Um, welcome once again to the show. Thank yeah, 5 0 win on the weekend. Um, five separate goal scorers against Heidelberg United. Uh, don't we love beating the Greeks? Oh, I tell you what, <laughs> Gian Albano, Bramwell, Simakula, Phelps, and Sumayoro. Um, how, did, how did you see that game? Uh, was it as easy as the scoreline suggests? Uh, look, I actually didn't. I didn't take part in that game. I was actually injured last week, so I didn't take part. So I watched the side. Yeah. So um, we we went out with the game plan. Look, we, you know, we we knew they were going to come out. They're um they're not playing the best footy at the moment, so we knew they were going to come out, sort of go on the physical side of things, and we just try to stick to our game plan the best we could. And in the recent weeks, we struggled maybe to um put more goals away than we should have. So I think that in that particular game, we um we really did far away at, um, in the final third, and we um. We got the deserved win, and um, the scoreline, I think, yeah, proves that um, we are much better on the day than them. Now, Anthony, uh, Friday night's a big Croatian derby. Is it more special when you play a Croatian team? Do you want to get up against the other ones? You know, is there a bit more banter throughout the week? Because, you know, you might know some of the other players and all those things. Yeah, look, uh, we, we know what um, we know what Dinamo's going to bring on um, on Friday. We've spoken about it um, during the week. I know they're coming off um, two big wins. Um, to get their season sort of back on the right track. And um, we, we need to respect that and show them full respect. And, um, yeah, like just continue what we've been doing for the whole season. Hopefully, um, hopefully get the win. Now, uh, Michael, we can see on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the screen at the moment highlights from the first game, round one game. Um, a good crowd, as always is the case. Um, score ended up one all. Um, <clears throat> now, 13 weeks later or 13 rounds later, both teams have got a lot to play for. And if we um, if we just uh, bring up the ladder now um, and have a look at that ladder, um, at the moment, with that win that you, you managed to achieve last week, you've kind of escaped the relegation zone, but it's still there. Um, you need another win or two wins, I guess, to stay, steer clear of that. Obviously, the Knights need another win to cement their position in the, in the top four at the moment. Um, how, how are you guys confidence-wise? How's the mood in the dressing rooms ahead of uh, Friday night's big showdown? Oh, no, the mood's been good. It's obviously easier when you're winning than when you're losing, so yeah, it'd be better in that aspect. But no, it's been good. Change room has been good so far. We're just looking forward to it. hopefully string another performance together. And if we win, so be it. If we don't, we've still got another game next week. So yeah, we'll just take it as it comes, I guess. And Anthony, you, you, got, you guys have scored um, 10 goals in the last two games, speaking of last week MPL and then um, obviously Australia Cup as well. What's the secret behind scoring all those goals and uh, zero conceded as well? That, uh, that's a really good stat. Yeah, look, um, I know since Ben Khan obviously has come here through um, in the preseason, we had a clear message of what we wanted to achieve this year with the squad we have. Um, one of the first things, you know, he, he mentioned that um, to, be, to be a successful team, you've got to be good defensively. So we um we really yeah we really knuckled down this year and try to try to um, you know minimise the team's opportunities as long as they maximise ours. So um, yeah, like I said, it'll be um it'll be a tough out for Dynamo. They're obviously coming from two wins. We know what they're good at, and um we'll just yeah we'll try to prevent it as best as possible to make sure that um up on the other end our strikers and just, um just putting the goals away. 
Anthony, I'll, I'll stick with you. Um, ben Khan, a first-year coach, only a young fella. We've actually had him on one of our sister podcasts, the Football Outlet Show, earlier this year. Amazingly ambitious um, coach. He's come from Queensland. Um, he's, he just seems to – it's it's taken a little bit of time for him to settle in, but now that he's settled in, it seems things are going really, really well. How have you as players managed to kind of um, adapt to his philosophy and to his, uh, I guess, way of coaching? Um, it's from day one, really. He came in, um, he put out like on the table everything that he wanted to do. Um, he recruited the right players for, I guess, what he wanted to, to do here as well at, at the Knights. And um, we've been just working on that week in, week out, on that system, on that type of play. And I think it's um, paying off. I think we're playing um, the best footy we've played in a long time here at this club. And, um, and yeah, we're just going to keep building on that, you know. There's always room for improvement. Um, it's only half season, so there's a long way to go. Um, we take mm. each week um, as it comes. And, um, yeah, and just keep sort of just concentrating on what we're doing more than what other teams are doing in the weeks we're playing them. And Michael, you've got another Croatian derby on Tuesday night away to uh, North Geelong. So oh. tell tell us a bit about that. I mean, do you treat the cup games a bit separately and differently to the uh, league matches as well? No, not really. We go out there and try to win every game possible. Obviously, we want to stay in the cup and hopefully get to later rounds. And if we can do it, yeah, so be it. But we'll see how we go, I guess. It's just going to be a tough trip. Obviously four-day turnaround, and we've had that a couple of times this year already, so the boys are used to it. We'll do the ice parts, we'll do the rehab after the Friday night game, and head into that derby again, hopefully get another win if we quit, if we can, and march on in the cup. Yeah. Now, boys, um, I'll, I'll pose this question to both of you, maybe you, Michael, first, and then um, Anthony, you second. Um, look, it, it's, it's, it's a funny kind of a, a relationship in that many, many players have played at multiple clubs. You guys, are, I guess, included, at, you know, whether it be at North Geelong, whether it be at the Dinamo, or whether it be at, at Melbourne Knights. Uh, how, how much of it is rivalry? How much of it is it just friendly banter? Or how much of it is it once the game starts, you just want to, like, at all costs, you don't want to lose and you don't want to, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, you want bragging rights. Uh, Michael, first of all to you, how, how much of a big thing are these Croatian derbies? Yes. Of From a player's point of view, that is. Yeah, of course, it's a big thing. You want to obviously beat the other Croatian team and get the win. It's like having a cousin or a brother. You want to beat them in the backyard as much as you can. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's kind of like that. You. You like respect them, but you want to get the win as well. So, yeah. Anthony. Yeah, it's typical, similar to what Michael said. You know, you respect them. Um, you know, ninety minutes, ninety minutes. You go out there, do a job for your team, and then when, when the ninety minutes is over, everyone's you know sort in the beer garden and um, you know, laughing away and enjoying enjoying the night. So you know, no hard feelings in the in the end, and that's just the way it has to be. Yeah, Anthony, have there been any uh, recruits this year that have really impressed uh, the Melbourne Knights faithful um, in the 70th year? It's a big year of celebration. So, uh, yeah, who are the big players that, that you think that have come on board and um, have really impressed? Oh, look, we've got, a, we've, got a, we've got a whole new squad, really. There's not many players from the recent years that have stayed. I think it's like only me, John, and um, young Luca Kulic, who, you know, who's been the regulars from last year that stayed on to um, onto this year. So, yeah, look... You know, when you look at it, we're sitting fourth with um with all new recruits. I'm pretty sure they've all um all done their jobs and um all impressed in their own ways. So that's which is which uh, which is a really good thing. Um and uh, yeah, let's, let's hope we all keep it up. Yeah, and Anthony, look, um, it, it, next year we talked about possibly the national second division kicking off, possibly the Melbourne Knights coming on the show, and we've 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 already had Parvi Yusuf, the Melbourne Knights uh, president, on the show in the very very first um, episode of the uh, of the Ozcro Soccer Show. Um, this could well be the last derby, um, possibly. Um, is it hard from your point of view playing at the Knights? almost ha trying to focus on the season now, or is there kind of that little bit of thinking about, ooh, you know, we've already got one eye on the national second division, who could possibly be in on it? You know, is it is it hard not to get carried away by the excitement at the moment? No, look, we, we don't, we don't. to be fair, we don't really talk about it um, much in the change rooms that, um, okay. that between ourselves. I know Parva's um, has gone to a lot of meetings and put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, you know, we have a word to him about it when we see him. But, um, yeah, like I said, Ben's really just focused on and, and the playing group. Uh, we're just really focused on the year. And um, to be fair, as individuals, you know, you want to perform. So in case, you know, it does come in next year, you have a contract on the table waiting for you. So that's, that's yeah, that's yeah. what's in my mind, just to make sure I perform. 
for the um for the next half of the season as best as I can. Brilliant, terrific, brilliant. Mike, Michael, take us through your goal on the weekend. How did you score? How did it come about? You know, uh, what was the feeling after banging in the winner? Oh, it was good play. We obviously cleared the ball from a corner, played it around. They cleared it, came to me and just swung a left boot at it. Just a lucky one, I guess. But no, it was just a good feeling just to get to win. So yeah, yeah we, if I'm not talking about. It, yeah. And that was already was up to, you... we were down to 10 men, right? So I think the 23rd yeah. minute we lost, uh, we were down to 10 men. And then 28th, I think you scored. Is that right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's been a habit this year. I think, yeah, four out of the five Reds cards have been in the first half. So, yeah, sort of used to it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was going to say, like, we, you, we talk about the Croatian derbies, but the big Western Suburbs derby, and that's a real near neighbour of yours and a traditional rival, Green Gully, the Maltese club. Um, beating them on their home turf. Um, and, and look, they're in the, what, top six uh, or were. Um, that must have been a great, great feeling for, for the boys in the club. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's a tough place to go to, Green Gully. I don't think we've had the best of results here. So to get a win there is a big boost for the club, a big boost for the coaching staff and everyone involved in the club. So. Yeah, they're still in sixth place. There you go. Well, gents, we wish you all the very, very best for Friday night. May the better team win, I suppose. Um, and I, I look forward to uh, to it for several reasons. I'll be actually up there in the commentary box along with Chris Gleason calling the game. So I look forward to the action and the entertainment as well. And hopefully there's a huge crowd. And I uh, hope you guys uh, do both. Both of you do very, very well on the park on Friday night. Thank, Thank you, boys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Good on you, boys. Charles. Michael Gurkic from the St. Albert's the Dinner and Anthony Juzel from the Melbourne Knights. And thank you to the respective presidents, Ilya Dragicevic from St. Albert's um, Dinamo and Pave Yusuf from the Melbourne Knights for pretty much a very, very short notice organising those two gentlemen to come on. But there it is. There's all the details. Round 14 of the NPL Victoria competition um, the big Melbourne derby, possibly the last one of its kind. Uh, let's, in a way, hope that it, that is the case as far as a league derby goes. But it's this Friday night at Knight Stadium there in Sunshine North, 7.30 p.m. kickoff. If you can't make it um, or are interstate, jump onto npl.tv and um, myself and uh, Chris Gleeson will hopefully uh, keep you entertained. Not in the way that Ante Grabovac keeps us entertained, but uh, uh, nonetheless... <laughs> <laughs> thanks, um, thanks, gonna, I, need, gonna, I, need, I need Tony Shawad with me, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> now, we're going to take a very short break. When we return, the show's not over just yet. We'll very, very quickly talk about the um, Croatian football scene, uh, what's happening over there. And also, we promised about that footage of that unbelievable crowd atmosphere in the Dom Sportova in Zagreb for the big futsal semi final between uh, Futsal Dinamo and NK Novo Vrijeme, or MNK, Malo Nogometni Klub, Novo Vrijeme from Makarska. Folks, don't go away. We'll be back very, very shortly. Welcome to Slavicek Studio Architecture. Our approach combines modern design with harmonious solutions tailored to your unique needs. We listen closely to your vision and turn it into a functional, beautiful living environment that truly feels like home. Our designs cater to your needs and evolve with you over time, encouraging deeper connections with family and friends. Specializing in custom residential homes and boutique apartments, we balance luxury and comfort to create a welcoming atmosphere for everyone to enjoy. Discover a world of inviting and captivating design at www.slavicekstudio.com.au. Contact us for a journey from idea to reality. Slavicek Studio Architecture, turning your dreams into reality. Folks, back. welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. We're not done yet. It's been a massive show tonight. Stay with us for about another five minutes as we do the Croatian Roundup. Ante, take it away. Take it away, indeed. Let me tell you, I will take it away. I was uh, <laughs> just looking at something else. Uh, okay, here we go. The table, Dinamo Zagreb, of course, have taken the championship away um this week is match day 35 of 36 in terms of last week's results 
We had quite a few um, good results there. So Slavon Blupo drew nil all with Lokomotiva. Istra defeated Gorica by one goal to nil. And that, of course, kept uh, Shibenik in the race for the relegation battle. Dinamo defeated Shibenik 4 nil. Hajduk defeated Osijek 3 nil. And Bajazin defeated Ierka 2 nil. And so, yeah, in those all important all important second, third, and fourth spots. Hayduk is still second, um, and they will keep second. Rijeka will be third, potentially, depending on Osijek, um, and how they perform as well. So there's only two points between them. And Istra is also on 45, as is Varejdin. So, um, yeah, the two rounds to play, that could be interesting for third and fourth position. And this week's matches, second last round, the penultimate round of the Hrvatski Telekom Prva Liga, Slavin Belupo are at home to Hajduk Split. Gorica at home to Varajdin, hoping to secure their place for next season. Rijeka are at home to Dinamo Zagreb. Shibenik, they need to beat Osijek to have a hope in that last round to um, to uh, avoid relegation. And Lokomotiva at, at home to Istra 1961. Moving on to the so Liga Divizia. Yeah. Do you want to take that over? Yeah, okay, why not? Um, Rudesh, they've secured their spot in, uh, obviously, in the uh, next year's Prva Liga. They had a massive 4 0 win over um, fellow Zagreb club Dubrava Zagreb. Dugopolje defeated Jarun 1 0. Bielo Brde defeated Kustosia 1 0. Hrvatski Dragovoljac, well, I guess uh, they, they acknowledge their demise to the third tier um, next year, which is a really sad story. Last year, they were in the uh, in the first division, now their second division relegated into the third division. They drew with um, Imotski Club Croatia, Croatia Zmijavci 2 2. Cibalia, uh, they um, uh, back on winning ways. That's a second win in a row. 3 2 over Orient. And they celebrated in Vinkovci with the unveiling of a new hybrid practice pitch or hybrid pitch on their second um, pitch, which is hybrid turf on their second pitch, <laughs> which will ensure um, the for training facilities and, and for, certainly for their uh, academy, um, much, much better surfaces to train on as well as to play on. Uh, Vukovar, they had a big win over Solin, 5-2. And uh, Vukovar, well, hopefully they next year will go um, as favourites to, to take out the second division. Um, that would be a big, big thing for for uh, for Vukovar and for Croatian football, if they could do that, but at the moment the infrastructure is just not there. Um, nonetheless, um, maybe a year or two years in t- two years' time it will be. All right, the third last round of the second division. Orient are at home to Bielo Brdo. Uh, Rudesh entertains Solin. Croatia Zmijavci at home to Dugopolje. Vukovar and Cibalia, the big battle for second spot. That's going to take place in Vukovar between the two near neighbours, Jarun and Dubrava Zagreb. They'll also be um, fighting it out in um, in Zagreb there, as will Kustosia and Hrvatski Dragovoljac. But the big news was the futsal, foot, the Croatian Futsal League First Division. They had the semi-finals last weekend. They were, um, played over two legs. Um, well, it was a best of three series, but it never ended up going into a third game for either of the two teams. Square, um, which is a funny name for a club, from Dubrovnik. They lost both their games 1-4 to Olmisum from Ormish. Now, Olmisum, they are the heavyweights of Croatian futsal. Um, they've got this beautiful stadium in Olmish, right near, um, not far from Split. And it's a, a lot of the Dalmatian clubs are just powerhouses in futsal at the moment. Um, but in the other semi-final, Futsal Dinamo took on Novo Vrijeme from Makarska. Now, in the first game, it was um, 3-2 to Futsal Dinamo, which was you know, a, a big surprise, a big shot. Um, or sh- should I say 1-2 was the away um, win down in Makarska. And then the second game, Futsal Dinamo also won that out, won that 3-2. So all in all, they basically won um, 5-3 on aggregate. So well, if we go return that, the final will be played in Ormish. Game one will be played. So it's a best of... Five games, if you like. So it's the first one to win three games. Um, this Saturday morning, 4.15 a.m., if you're able to get Croatian IP TV, uh, you'll be able to tune in and watch this game. Olmisum takes on Futsal Dinamo. 
That's at the famous Ribnyak Sports Stadium, a beautiful complex down in Ormish. Game two is Tuesday morning, 3 o'clock our time. Then game three, next weekend, we'll move to Zagreb. And if a fourth game is required, that too will be played in Zagreb. Now, should the series be split two games apiece, the fifth and final game, the decider, that will be played back in Ormish. Um, and I, look, I don't think it can fit more than a thousand people, but it would be packed to the rafters, no doubt. But, um, mate, that brings us to the end of the show, Ante. Um, we did promise all of our viewers that we would um, play some uh, unbelievable um, footage of the the three thousand plus crowd that was in attendance at the Dom Sportova for the semi final of the futsal league between Futsal Dinamo and um, Novo Vrijeme Makarska. Obviously, it was a very parochial crowd. Obviously, they were all the Dinamo Bad Blue Boys supporters, um, but the uh, the atmosphere that was created was just absolutely unbelievable. So we're going to leave it with um, with this atmosphere. So until next week, mate, have a great week, and, uh, yeah, we'll have another huge show next week, I promise. Good night. Good night. La Cunoche. Thank you.